From the way you wear your hair When you glance across the room and stare in the distance Your style and the clothes you wear They were created just for me You're beautiful the way you are Don't you know that you're brighter than a star, girl? I want you to know who you are You're beautiful to me show for CNAs by CNAs. I'm your host Wendell and this is my lovely co-host Angel. Hello and we are here at the Waver Studio in Phoenix, Arizona. Yay, yay. And today's show we will be talking about hospital readmissions. That's right Angel and did you know that in 2013 the ARP stated that over two-thirds of all hospitals were penalized over 227 million dollars for excessive hospital readmissions. Whoa, that's a lot of money. That's right, it is. I wish I had that money. <laughs> well, Angel, are you ready to start the show? I sure am. All right, well, in that case, let's get on the good foot. <clears throat> get on the good foot. <laughs> let's have a conversation. Let's talk singing names. Let's talk singing names. Let's talk singing names. Let's have a conversation. All right, thank you for being on the show, Joe. Could you tell us a little something about yourself? Well, I'm a nurse over at Honor Health John C. Lincoln. I started off as a CNA, yay, EMT. Yay. Uh, this, this one right here trained me. This one? Yeah, right here. <laughs> yeah, we worked together for a couple years. I'm a trained Angel. professional. Already. <laughs> Already. Right. Uh, so we got my nursing license about a year ago. All right. So, Congratulations, Joe. Congratulations. So how long were you a CNA before you became a nurse? Seven years. About seven. Oh, wow. Seven years, so wow. And I was an EMT a couple yeah. years before that. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I've been wow. in healthcare for like 13 years total. Oh, You know, wow. I think the best nurses are ones that have been CNAs. I agree I, with I, you I on do. that. Yeah. I agree with you on that. Yeah. I totally do. All right. Well, Joe, uh, again, thank you for being on the show. And as you know, we have what we call the million dollar segment. And your million dollar question comes from 50 CNAs and wanted to know. What's the difference between Medicare and Medicaid? Okay, so Medicare. So what I when I looked it up. So <laughs> that's right. That's research. <laughs> um, Medicare is for disabled people and people over sixty-five. That's uh -huh. their health insurance. So okay. so depending on if you're considered disabled, and then Medic Aid is uh, state level and uh, federal level for people with. You know lower income so like access or you know so that's their help, way to get health insurance okay okay all that right. makes sense that makes sense all right joe can you explain to us what the hospital readmission reduction program is yes yeah, so in uh, a few years ago the aca the affordable care act came out noticing that uh hospital readmissions were costing health care a lot of money mm -hmm. oh, yeah. you know um mm -hmm. so for these certain topics uh uh acute mis uh CHF, COPD, uh, mm -hmm. total replacements of hip and knee, uh, cabbages, that, you know, within 30 days, if people came back within 30 days, mm -hmm. you know, some, part of that won't be, uh, uh, what's that called? Uh, reimbursed. reimbursed. Mm -hmm. So, and I think the top, the, the top amount is 3%. So what happens is that they take your hospital compared to other similar hospitals and look at your readmissions, mm -hmm. and they give you a level that you can be at. Mm -hmm. And then they t look at the national level. Mm -hmm. And depending on where you fall, so if you come back every year higher, you get you know a bigger deduction. Okay. You know, okay. so but if you're better, you don't get that deduction. Uh -huh. You know, so that's how they go off averages. So you can have some readmissions because some are you know people are going to be remitted. You know, right, right, right. But right, right. you know, like uh, CHF 
free admission. I think it's one in four, you know, wow. are within the first month that mm-hmm. they'll come back, you know, so if they're not fouled up with. Mm-hmm. So that's what that is. So just just so just so everybody would know, can you explain what CHF is? So CHF is chronic heart failure, right? Okay. So okay. that is when you have this what they call your ejection fraction, how, how hard your heart pumps, okay. how much okay. how much blood percentage is leaving your heart with every pump, okay. right? Okay. Normal is about 60, low normal about 50. Mm-hmm. You know, when it gets under 40, they consider that heart failure. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. So then, okay. then you think about different sides of the heart. So right side works on your lower body, mm-hmm. and your stomach area. Left side is your lungs, right? Mm-hmm. And that water builds up, and that, you know, if you if your water builds up a lot, that's when they get those side effects of can't breathe or suit, mm-hmm. you know, very swollen. They have to right. come in a lot. Okay. They get, you know, di- diarrhea, the water off. That's where it leads to the re emissions. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Very understandable. That's understandable. <laughs> very yeah. understandable. So, Joe, what is considered a hospital readmission? A hospital remission, like I said, was any, so to any hospital within 30 days of a discharge. So it can go to any hospital. Okay. So it's not just that hospital back to that hospital you want to so but pay, yeah any hospital they go within 30 days you know unless it's considered planned you know there's mm-hmm. planned ones mm-hmm. you know but you know so that's what it is and it has to be inpatient not observation not mm-hmm. you know outpatient it's all inpatient stuff mm-hmm. okay. so okay that makes okay. sense and I'm, and I'm glad you I'm glad, I'm glad you said that Joe because uh, actually does Medicare pay for the first 30 days of readmission, and how does that affect long-term care? So, uh, how much they pay, I think it's overall a percentage, you know, so it's not that they just don't pay for that readmission, mm-hmm. right? It's an overall percentage of how much they're getting back. So it's mm-hmm. 3% oh. max, you know, three, but you know, 3% of what a hospital makes could be a lot of money, mm-hmm. you know, oh, yeah. so I don't know exact money, but it's not like that they're mm-hmm. not getting paid. It's just depending on how much they're not going to cover, you know, so it's still less, mm-hmm. right. you know, and the problem with that, you know, less money means less resources, right? right exactly. So, you know, and then you talk about long-term care, you know, if, you know, if they have to go to a SNF or a acute rehab place, and it's, you know, and it's been over, they can only go to those every, for so long. I'm not 100% sure how long, uh-huh. but so let's say they've been through one already and then they come back, you know, it's, it, it's the point where they won't cover another stay, okay. you know? So then they have to, you know, like Coronado has to take them, you know, and uninsured. And then, right, yes. you know, then they have to make that up other ways. Exactly. Um, and that's how it affects, is that how it affects long-term care is that, if they, they only pay 3%, but if they come back and they're not covered under the insurance, then Coronado, for instance, would have, we'll to, have to. to make that bill for whatever bill to accumulate. Exactly. Uh, with that and then resident. you would have to, like, take from, you know, the budget, and that's, you know. Here and there. Yeah. 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 Okay, 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 that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. And is there, is there anything long-term care facilities can do to stop hospital readmission? Yeah, so what we said uh, is continuance of care, right? So that's like the biggest thing when it comes to stopping readmissions is getting the care continuing. Right. You know, so they come into the hospital, they're very closely monitored. You know, a nurse has five, six patients, you know, and, you know, they so they can see these people, you know, mm-hmm. and doctors are coming in every day, mm-hmm. you know, so they get their symptoms taken care of, they get better, and they go home and they're not watched. Right. And then what happens, you know, or they go to a long care facility and the nurses have 30 patients, Exactly. you know, and, you know, so it, it gets to the point where they're not watched and symptoms get passed and they get worse and worse and then they go back in again. Mm-hmm. Right. So first thing would be a continuum of care is essential. Right. It makes a lot of sense. Sex, second is, is education, right? Knowing these signs and symptoms of worsening condition and be able to eye them when they get early mm-hmm. enough. So like CHF, you know, if they get two pounds uh, wait within the first day, mm-hmm. you know, we can notify the doctor, get an uh, extra order of di- diuretic, so they don't, then they get better the next day, they don't have to go, you know, it doesn't get worse. So that's exactly. retaining yeah. water. Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. So, okay. you know, so every, you know, weight is the, like the number one thing for retaining water, right? Mm-hmm. So like, you know, two pounds in a day, they can do that. And then all of a sudden it's four pounds and then five pounds. Then all of a sudden they're 
they can't breathe, you know, or they're mm-hmm. super overloaded. Mm-hmm. Now they need IV stuff and it's too late, mm-hmm. right? So that, you know, just that's another way of doing it. Um, also, education on the patient, right? So if, you know, nurse or even the CNAs, you know, they keep on reminding the people, educating people, you know, when that's you right. leave here, you still have to take these medications or you you know when you leave here you have to make sure you weigh yourself like we're weighing you every day Mm -hmm. you know constant reinforcement so we can continuing to keep it up right that really helps when they when the uh the resident or the patient knows you know about what they should be doing Mm -hmm. you know the education really helps yeah that's true that's true because i can remember after my surgery you know i was very scared you know uh, it has nothing to do with this. You know, well, it may have something to do with it. I wasn't really admitted. <laughs> but it may have something to do with it. But I remember when they were discharging me, you know, they was making sure that I was comfortable with going home right. at that time with the orders that were being given to me, you know, in order to take care of myself, you know. I felt like I was confident enough to take care of myself, you know, that I, I wouldn't need anybody or anyone to come in and take care of me so it, would that be considered part of readmission you know yeah well that's definitely part you know like you know i work in a observation unit right so mm-hmm. you know they come in for 24 hours 40 hours but we get a lot of hand surgeries we get a lot of different surgeries you know and people come in and we have to worry about can they take care of the wound Right. you know mm-hmm. after that right mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. are they comfortable because if they go home and they're not comfortable changing they're not going to change it right. it gets affected they're going to come back right right, right. so right. you know it's all about that again it's education educating the cha person mm-hmm. this is what you need to do exactly. you know and so you know we want you to call if you you have these symptoms so we can help you before you have to come back here it's all about um, quality of life and continuing that quality exactly. of life, right? Because if you're always in the hospital, in and out, you're not having a good quality of That's life. Right. No, you're not. Right. not All right, Joel, our producer is telling us that we have about 30 seconds left. So, so. we have uh, any last words you want to say to everybody? Yeah. Uh, first, uh, you know, for CNAs, you know, you go past the traditional, traditional CNA role, right? If people think CNAs are just hold, you know, the bathroom or washing, stuff like that. You know, expand your knowledge, continuous uh, improvement, continuous education is super important, even as a CNA, you know, because you are the eyes and ears of a nurse. Okay. Straight up, okay. you're nursing assistant. You're not nursing bathroom, nursing, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, you're right. you're yeah, there right. to assist butt us. Butt wipers, so you're not when, just butt wipers. Yeah, so <laughs> when you come to long-term care with 30 patients, you guys are the eyes and ears. You see the patients more. So if you notice something worse, you have to let the nurse know by knowing what's critical, right? Well, Wendell, didn't we have an awesome, great show? We sure did, Angel. And I would like to leave you with this quote. A goal is a dream with a deadline by Napoleon Hill. Oh, I really love that uh, saying. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, make sure you check us out on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. That's right. And we'd like to thank our special guest, Nurse Joe, for being on the show. And we'd like to thank you for watching the show. And we'll see you next time on Let's Talk CNAs, where knowledge is empowering. Get on the good foot. Uh, uh, Get on the good foot. Uh, Work it out on the scene uh, like a love machine. Hey. Hey. (laughs) Let's have a conversation. 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 Let's have a conversation.